Hello and welcome to the video review of the Electro Automatique PS2042B power unit. Now, this is a device that hasn't been reviewed yet on the internet or on YouTube, like most of the other reviews that I've been doing. And I purchased this device recently because my son wanted to join me with some experiments in the lab and he wanted to test uh, something he built with several drone motors and these are rather serious motors and they're power electronics and I actually found out that I had several power supply units in the lab including this fancy Roden and Swartz over here but none of them actually was able to drive these drone motors in any reliable way. Why is that so? Because units like this Roden and Swartz have a relatively modest overall power per channel. This is about 33 watts per channel. Um, and that's certainly not enough for such a, uh, a motor. Now, on paper, you can basically run the channels of these units in parallel so that you can run three times as much power. But I never got to run this in a reliable way, especially if you have like a changing type of load connected to the device. And down in the comments, I'll be posting URL of some discussions about not getting this, this type of parallel mode running reliable at all. So I was looking for, um, for another way actually to power up these electronics and I decided to buy a power supply that can do a bit more of heavy listing. And looking at the options on the market, I ended up buying this unit from, uh, from Electro Automatique. Um, now this is a pretty serious unit in terms of, of power it can deliver. Um, it delivers up to 42 volts. It delivers all the way up to 20 amps. Um, and altogether it can deliver up to some 320 watts of overall power. So that is 10 times as much as the individual channels here in my, my Roden, and, Roden and Swartz here. Um, and in this video review I'll be talking a little bit about its features and how it relates to other members of, 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 of the family of PSUs that Electro Automatique offers on the, on the market. There's a whole series uh, of similar type of power supplies with, with slightly different specs here. Um, we'll be connecting the unit and we'll look a little bit at the user interface and also connect it to a load and see how it behaves. And I'll be sharing my, my overall thoughts about this unit and provide you with my, uh, my recommendations. But first we take a quick look at the device. Um, it actually looks very simple. And I think that's kind of fine because this is a device that costs about 400 euros on the European market. So that's not particularly expensive I think for what's on offer here. And I can live with a unit that's not that particularly fancy looking. We do have a very solid uh, device. We have a hard on off button. I always like to see that. Here we got our two power terminals. Um, unfortunately, these are not at the regular type of spacing that you find with most power supplies. So those that have like this plug with two banana jacks in it, or for example, those that want to do rimpel measurement and they have this nice converter from two banana jacks to B and C will be disappointed because you can't connect them right away over here. You'll have to construct something yourself. I would rather have seen that they would have used the regular distance between the, uh, the, 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 the power sockets here. Um, for the rest, a very simple user interface, two buttons with the indent and with a push and later on we'll see how that works. And actually they implemented that in a pretty nice way. We got two push buttons here. And we got a USB connector and that's, that's rather in a strange location, I would, would say. Now, you might argue if you connect this device by USB uh, that you can't use the local controls anyway, so you don't need to turn any of these buttons, but nevertheless, it's a bit of an odd position here. And I got the feeling that this was chosen solely on the basis of manufacturing considerations that there's gonna be like the control board here on the front. So the easiest thing was to have the, the USB connector somewhere here placed on the, on the front of the instrument. It's a bit weird looking, but, but I can live with it. Otherwise, there's not much to tell, except that it's a pretty hefty unit. But then again, we're talking about more than 300 watts of power it can deliver. And on the back side, we got the power inlet and a small fan. Now, if you turn the unit on, you very clearly hear the fan starting spinning. That takes about one or two seconds, and then it goes pretty silent again. And you hardly hear the fan even on the rather serious loads of the device. So, so in that sense, I think it's really well done. Now let's take a close look at the, um, at the spe specification of the unit I'm reviewing here. So the one that I have here is, is like a no-frill power supply, supplies up to 42 volts and up to 20 amps. Got an overall total power 
a maximum power of 320 watts and has some basic remote control via USB, which I'm actually going to show a little bit more about in a, in a second. Um, this is part of a, of a series of, uh, of power supplies and, and actually it's the uh, second version of the uh, second generation of this series. On top here you see the, the older model um, and in particular a display was different um, and it got a power button with a, uh, with a light in there and the, the newer one, you, uh, the one I'm looking at now, you see at the, um, at the bottom. Now as part of this family you actually have a number of different models here and I'm Showing here a closer look, so you got models with a maximum uh, voltage of 42 volts and models with a maximum voltage of 82 volts. And so those with 42 volts uh, can be bought in, in, in several power configurations, but they go all the way up to 20 amps. That's actually the one that I'm, I'm looking at. And the one that go to 84 volts also on a number of, uh, of different power versions with a maximum at 10 watts. So... Actually, for each of the different voltage models, you got three models available for 100, 160 and 320 watts of total power. Um, today I'm just looking at the, um, the single channel models, but there are also like two or two and a half uh, channel models as, um, as well. You can find them on the, on the website. Now I already told you that, that I, I, I bought this power supply to, to complement um, existing power supplies in my lab that, that get it, no, get it didn't go high enough when it came to overall power. Let's take a quick look how it compares to my uh, Roden and Swartz and the 103 power supply. So in blue here you see the unit I'm, I'm, I'm testing right now. Um, and, and obviously there's a power envelope that that can go up to like at up to 20 volts it can deliver like the maximum power of 20 watt then there's a, a point in the curve where there's going to be like power limited um, up to the point of 42 volts where it's going to be like voltage limited in terms of what it can do now if we look at the Roden and Swartz a regular one channel is the orange line that that's really a completely different level of uh, of power that's not to say it's a bad power supply I like the Roden and Swartz power supply a lot um, but they're simply not meant to deliver this type of powers. And if you would try to put the Roden and Swartz in parallel operation, you would go to the gray line or even the, the, the orange line. Even then the gap is big. Um, and like I said, I never got this parallel mode operation working reliably for really fluctuating loads or practical situation. I mean, with a lot of effort, I can get it working with an electronic load very carefully set, um, but, but otherwise uh, not really. Now let's take a quick look at the um, at the inside of the uh, electroautomatic as uh, as well. Um, here you see some uh, some pictures. It's fairly straightforward what we will find in a, in a switching um, power supply here. Um, overall, I have a pretty solid um, impression of how things are done. Um, we see several um, cooling plates. We see a big one there, uh, more on the left side, where we got the the power sticker on. Uh, where the uh, where's the hard power silicon and we see some more all the way up at the um, at, at, at the end um, and, and actually there we got more like the the diodes that are, are connected to that one uh, and on the right we can uh, we can see the PCB where the the, 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 the screen is, is on um, and the vertical one that we see right over there at the front right um, that is the the controller unit Take a little bit more detailed look here. We see the um, the silicon that, that switches the actual power supply. We don't get to see its tie because it's um, it's, it's, it's heavily um, shielded here, connected to the uh, um, to the uh, to the metal plate behind it. Um, there are some places if you look at, at, at the construction, which is, it kind of looks kind of odd. It looks like you see a number of transistors actually on the top of each other. It seems that eventually they were using kind of bigger resistors than, than they were originally intended to do so. But I guess that's only a good thing. I think they realized in time that perhaps this particular version of the power supply, uh, like the highest version in the series, um, apparently required some, some, uh, some higher spec components and they, they, they must have done so. Now this is the little vertical PCB where you see the, uh, the controller unit uh, residing. I, I looked it up. It's an NXP microcontroller. Uh, it's, uh, it's an ARM M3 uh, processor. Must be fast enough for this purpose. And here, and, 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 and take a moment to take a good look what you're seeing here. You see the 
power terminals, the output power terminals, but seen from the inside. So red on the top and black, that's a bit of harder to see at the, uh, at the bottom. We see these uh, thick uh, wires come here, and we see the, 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 the measurement uh, wires. But the interesting thing, and that's why I'm showing you this picture here, there, is, there are two capacitors right over the output terminals. There's a smaller one, more like, uh, like high frequency suspension, but there's also a bigger one, can't see its value from here right now, uh, might be a 100 microfarad, uh, microfarad or something. Um, and later on, actually, when we do a measurement, I reflect back on the fact that we, we find this, uh, this capacitor here right away in this point of the, the unit. All right, let's start to take a look now at the device itself, do a little bit of testing on it. And I set up a little test space and we got the power supply here. We got the DMM, which is connected to the outputs of the power supply. And we got an electronic load down here. Um, so first what we'll do, we'll turn it up and we we'll see how long it takes to power up. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So approximately nine seconds it started up. You might have heard there was a little bit of whining of the fan coming in, but then it disappears again and actually the device stays very quiet over almost all this operation, even when loaded pretty hard. So now we see the, uh, the display um, turning on. We see in, um, in blue the voltage, in, in red the uh, current, and we see the actual voltage and currents. We also see the set voltage and, and current over there. Um, and it's like a very clear, clean display. Now to, um, to set any voltage, basically work from the voltage knob over here, and you might see here this little line, and that line is basically the digit that I'm editing. So if I go up and down here, I will be turning on the voltage, if I press it one time, I would go like full digit. So actually it's a fairly convenient interface and the setting of the power will be exactly like that. So let's go here and so let's put the power at 19 amps. Um, otherwise in terms of, of setting of device is Pretty basic, simple and, and basic. We got a settings buttons over here. We get a little menu with settings, overview and a couple of setup issues. So if we go to settings, we use the push button and we get all the settings and we can change here as well the settings that we're interested here. And actually we also get here the, uh, the, the, the protection and the, the limit values that we can, can do here. If we go back to overview, we actually get to see exactly the same thing, but we can't change them here. So that's a little bit redundant, I would say, the overview. There is the human interface menu with some language setting and you can lock the device and have a pin code enabled, etc. And finally, there's some information about the hardware and software version. Um, there is a utility um, that you could update the firmware, but I didn't find any firmware at all for this series on the website of the manufacturer. So I haven't tried anything like that. Okay, now let's go and start and, and, and use the, um, the unit a little bit and, um, and see how it, uh, how it behaves. So turning it on and off goes via the little button over here. Actually, if we've got a lot of cables, it is a little bit cluttered, especially if you've got like the USB cable that we'll be using for a little experiment in a moment. So I'm turning the device up. It says it goes to 10 volts and on the DMM, I see that actually that measurement is fairly accurate here. Now, if we add a load to it, so I set here the load down here, the electronic load at 60 amps. Um, so that's, that's pretty serious. So if we do that, we got 170 watts already being supplied by the device. Um, we see the power supply still says 10 volts. The X wall voltage, as I measure it here from the terminals, went down to 9.8. So that probably has to do with that the voltage measurement inside is not right away on the exit terminals or for some other reasons. He might be a little bit optimistic what he's measuring. 
but it's not a great deal of voltage that I would be concerned about in, um, in any way. Now the next thing that I would like to explore a little bit is the is the the, the, um, the computer interface that it's supplied by um, by uh, by the manufacturer and if we go here to the computer we get to see a the so-called EA power control and first of all we have to go and look for our device and there we got to see it popping up right here on the screen and we got a couple of things we got what is called a terminal we got a settings menu, firmware update, sequence love, and a couple of calibration and other things that are not activated now. I think you can activate that by additional software licenses, which I, uh, which I don't have. Now, the most interesting of these is the terminal application. So I'll start it here and start it for my device. So this is how the terminal looks like. And we recognize here, uh, again, the screens that we got on the device itself as well, 10 volts, 18 amps right now and nicely we also see the power here in um, in green this is actually how it looks on on a couple of other devices by uh, electro 8 uh, automatic as um, as well actually i think it would have been actually nice if the power would also be shown on the the unit itself there there is enough screen real estate for that and like this in green it's it's very clear anyway you only get to see it is here in this uh, this user interface um, you can control everything from the device and then you would see the setting change. You can also control it from the computer right now. So I'm going to remote on. And so we we'll get to see here that I could change the voltage and the device would of course follow nicely. And I can also take the unit like on and off and we would see it doing exactly like that. We see also the overpower connection, like the overprotection voltage, the over power volt over current voltage and the uh, over power voltage and we also got some command scripting languages right here so here for example we can send out a message read device type and we would get to see some data on it i think if we go here this is another scripting language it's going to be a little bit clearer yeah if we do identity question mark then we get to see the uh, electronic arts if we do measure power then we're going to see the 184 watts or so there we go that the device is currently supplying um, and the set voltage here we would see 320 watt that's the one we uh, that that's actually set a little bit higher the protection but that's the overall deliverable power um, so this is a um, fairly usable interface here i would um, i would say let's Turn the remote control off again. Close the program. There's one more part that I would like to show you here and that is the sequence lock. And that's a pretty powerful sequence manager here where you can program in a number of steps uh, like a voltage pattern over time. I'm, I'm not gonna go in detail now, but I think for such a basic power supply, this is actually a a, a fairly nice functionality. I've been playing around a little bit with it and it did what you would expect it to do. We also have a settings app here, but most of the settings here are not particularly relevant to this device because we don't have an ethernet interface and some of the other interfaces um, that we might be interested in here. So that one has limited power for the device that I'm testing right now. All right, I would now like to look a little bit more how the power supply behaves under a, um, a load. And therefore I also connected up the oscilloscope here. And in yellow on channel one, we see the voltage coming out of the device. And on channel two in green, we see the power delivered by the device. Now how I'm measuring the power, the electronic load that I'm using here actually also has specific outputs um, that represent the voltage and power over the electronic load to a BNC output and I'm taking that by the oscilloscope and so the green line that you're seeing basically has a approximately 5 amps per octave or per decade I would say um, view on this, uh, this screen. So very simple let's just turn the power supply on and off and let's see what we see in terms of the, uh, the voltages and the power. So we turn it on now, 
Turn it off. And one more on and off. I'm going to stop it right here. And the load currently is at 18 amps, so that's a pretty hefty amount here. So what we actually see on the screen that it seems to be pretty well behave. Um, there's definitely not any overshoot. If anything, it's slightly slow in the way that it's kind of reacting. We could take a little bit better look how slow or fast that is. So let me see if I can kind of get that bigger on the screen. Slightly smaller would do. I'm going to use the cursor of my oscilloscope. Oh, let me see. The cursor right now is on horizontal. We want to have a vertical cursor. There we go. Um, so we're going to put cursor point one over here. We're going to put cursor point two uh, where the final voltage is read. Well, 230 milliseconds, 0 0.2 seconds. Um, so it's kind of slow in responding, but I think that is perfectly fine for a heavy power supply of the type that we have uh, we have here. And also in terms of going down, we see the same type of behavior. It takes like a few hundred milliseconds basically to get down again. Um, you might be a little bit surprised what you see here is that even if the, the, the volt is already down, he's still delivering all the power. Um, that must be that the measurement coming out of the electronic load lags a little bit behind because of course there's no reason to believe there can be significant power flowing um, if there's actually no, uh, uh, no voltage, no potential anymore. So that, that should be the delay that basically comes from the device over, uh, over here. Now, I just did this experiment under having a little bit of power here. Let's do the experiment again when we don't have the load here. So we go again. Ah, let's put your oscilloscope a little bit slower. So let's go to the, the voltage again. So we see no power. And we turn it off. Yeah, and this is what I wanted to show you. Basically, very, very, very slow. So it actually happens that it takes like perhaps as much as 10 seconds or so if you take off the, uh, if you turn off the power supply and there's no load to get back to, uh, to zero volt. Let's try it once more. We're turning it on, set at 10 volts, no load, and we turn it off. We also see it on the device itself, five, four, three, two, one. Now I think that must be because of the capacitor we saw before that was actually right over the output terminals of the device. Fine too, but you just want to be aware that if there's no load, there is going to be um, some power over the terminal for quite a while there. Now we can also take a look a little bit more at the dynamic behavior of the unit and that could be done by using some functionalities here that we got in the electronic load. So what we can do here is actually turn the electronic load on, off and on pretty fast here. I'm going to do that with 15 amps or so and see how the device behaves. So I'm going to turn that function on and I'm going to power my device. I actually might want to go a little bit faster here. Turn it off again. So we turn it on and now we see on the oscilloscope a little bit of voltage fluctuations. But I would say this is nothing really to worry about. If we think about that we're actually now switching something like um, 15 amps on and off all the, uh, the time here, um, we see really very small fluctuations here that, that I will be perfectly fine with. Now this has a certain rise time and fall time that can be seen on the scope of the, um, or on the display of the, uh, the electronic load right now. To look a little bit more how it behaves if we turn things on and off very fast, I also prepared a little program on the electronic load that's a sequence of different load situations. So let's try and go that. We're turning on the oscilloscope again. I'm going to try to find where my little program is. That is going to be under the program settings. I'm turning the device. So this is going to load the power supply first by one amp, back to zero, by two, back to zero, by three, back to zero, and then a couple of more steps like that. So we should start to see things rolling. I'm turning off the power supply 
and I'm triggering this particular function. And yes, we see on the oscilloscope, basically the steps coming here. We're now at eight amps, 10 amps, 12 amps, 14 amps, 16 amps, 18 amps. I think that was the last in my little sequence here. So let's take a look at the screen of the oscilloscope. Yeah, we do see a little bit of voltage fluctuation, particularly when a large road is being turned off. But then again, they're fairly small here. I, I, I think we could probably zoom into that a little bit more. Like the largest step that we just have here on the oscilloscope. We see here a bit of noise. We see it going up and, um, and down, but these are really very small amounts of voltage. Uh, so I, I think it's a very predictable power supply. It's not fast, but it's precisely what I would probably want under heavy loads and predictable type of behavior. Um, on the oscilloscope, if we now magnify the signal like this, we, we do see a little bit of noise. Um, I wouldn't take these measurements as, um, as accurate because actually I'm just using normal uh, banana leads here and, and any measurement of the noise of the power supply should really have a different setup either by, by proper coaxial cables that would start right away over here and here we have this problem again that, that the favorite type of, of connector that you would like to use there um, doesn't fit because they're not at a regular distance you would have to construct something yourself to connect a coaxial cable here that would have to go shielding right away to the plus and not pick up something. Um, and that's a much more precise task, I think, to, uh, to measure the noise of power supplies. Maybe you even want to engage a differential uh, measurement probe, but then you also want a differential one with very little noise. Um, that's not the purpose of the exercise I wanted to today, um, so I'm actually not going to do that. But altogether, I think I can say that this, this power supply really behaves exactly what what I wanted it to behave, I think, for, for a device in this category and for this type of purposes. Very solid, not very fast, but, but I think that would actually be my preference for the, for the purposes they have in mind for this, uh, for this power supply. Now, finally, the, um, the conclusion, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I like this unit, it performs well to expectations. It got lots of power, especially if you consider the, the street price, which I think is, 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 is rather fair. Um, it's a simple but a well done uh, user interface. I, I been using it without even thinking of it. It's, it's quality built. It has very silent operation. If any noise that you heard during my experiment here, it was probably the electronic load that had to get rid of this 200 watts or so of power it was dissip dissipating, uh, but not the unit itself. Um, and Small thing, but it's got a hard power button, I always like that. Um, on the minus side, some people might think it has rather simple looks, which is the, play, is the case. It got a bit of an odd position of the USB socket right away on the, on, on the front. I would have liked to see that differently. And the output terminals are not at the standard distance, so it's kind of harder to connect like converters to, for example, BNC, if you want to engage in, in ripple measurements or for any other reason would like to do that. But I think overall, this is a very nice unit.